Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today I want to answer the question, is Linux Mint safe? The reason why I'm posting this video is because I have had many comments on my channel and read comments elsewhere from people who now are very concerned about whether they should run Linux Mint on their machine and this is all due to the thing that happened where Linux Mint's website got hacked a couple of weeks ago. I have responded directly to many of these comments but at this point in time I'm starting to see some pretty ridiculous things being said in other places and I wanted to respond to it myself. First of all a very quick recap. Uh, the weekend around February the 20th the Linux Mint website was hacked. The hackers used a WordPress vulnerability. WordPress is an application that a lot of people use on the internet to to make websites and forums and it does have some known vulnerabilities. The hackers found this vulnerability in the Linux Mint site and they were able to make off with the database that contained the email addresses, usernames, and passwords of the people who were in the Linux Mint forum. Linux Mint responded immediately by telling people to change that password and change that password elsewhere if they should have happened to use it in another place. The other thing that happened was is that the hackers were able to redirect the download link for the Linux Mint 64-bit Cinnamon Edition ISO. So a couple of hundred people out there got a hold of a bad ISO. In other words, they clicked on it and instead of coming from Linux Mint, it came from some server in Bulgaria and the hacker had recompiled the entire ISO and added a, a Trojan horse. So Linux Mint responded to that by telling people that if you did download that ISO, make sure you delete it. If you installed from that ISO, reinstall your system. They also explained in great detail exactly how to tell whether you had, got a, had gotten a hold of one of these bad ISOs. So that was the extent of the damage to the Linux Mint site. And so if you didn't download that ISO and install it somewhere, no problem. If you were careful not to recycle your password and use it on other websites, uh, the one that you gave to the Linux Mint forum, for instance, if you gave the Linux Mint forum the same password that you use on your bank account, uh, you really don't have anything to worry about. Your email address, your birth date, and anything else that might have been in there, if anybody wants that information, they can find it in 30 seconds on the internet, whether they get it from the database file that was taken from the Linux Mint forum or just happen to run across your email address anywhere. So that is not cool, but it's not terribly dangerous as long as you didn't recycle that password. So that is the extent of the damage. So as far as I'm concerned, if you are a Linux Mint user and have been using it, you do not have to worry about getting in sort of any in kind any kind of backdoors through updates from Linux Mint or anything like that. The hackers never got anywhere near the actual distribution itself. They just redirected the download link to give you a dirty ISO. That's it. And I can show you a little bit of why this is two different things. Uh, I've tried to explain this to some people in comments and those who do not understand the underpinnings of a Linux distribution are still going, well, I'm not going to do it. It's insecure. First of all, let's take a look at the repository list for Linux Mint Rosa. This is from the Linux Mint website. These are all of the packages that are available in the Linux Mint repository for Rosa. Uh, and you see here we're mostly talking about things that are related to the desktop and certain Mint tools. And if we keep scrolling down through this page here, we get past this, and then we come to the real main part of the Linux Mint distribution, and that is Ubuntu. So if you ran updates even during this whole situation, chances are that your updates came directly from the Ubuntu servers for Ubuntu 14.04 LTS and there was no time that you were ever at risk of getting anything on your computer from Linux Mint uh, that would make it unstable or insecure, okay? Because all of it came from Ubuntu and Ubuntu has had no hacks recently. 
However, about two or three years ago, Ubuntu's Launchpad website, where they host their forums, was hacked in a very similar way. And the hackers made off with all of the people's who were in the forums, all of their email addresses and passwords for the forum too. And I really don't remember people going around saying, oh, the whole distribution's insecure, you can't use it. Uh-uh. They didn't do that. They're doing it this time. And I think it's because there's a lot of ignorance in the Linux community of how Linux distributions actually work. Okay? So... Take it from somebody who has attempted to build their own Linux distribution. <laughs> uh, you really need to take your hats off to the developers because there's a lot that goes into it. And anybody who would try and hack a repository directly, uh, they're probably going to get caught very, very quickly simply because the maintainers, they pay so close attention to actually what's going on here. And any of these packages that you find here, you can go and get the source code. Let's see. You can see what directory it's in, exactly where it's coming from on the Internet. Uh, here you go. Okay. So, yes, Linux Mint is perfectly safe and will be safer now uh, than it has ever been simply because of the fact that they have been through this experience. This is the, the monthly news for February 2016 on the Linux Mint blog. Clem Lefebvre, who is the leader of the Linux Mint team, goes through in great detail everything that has been done to patch the problem and to make Linux Mint more secure in the future. It's all right here. And if you want to go read this, be my guest. It's very enlightening. A quick search here on Linux Mint security concerns brought up a lot of blog posts and things like that. People... Uh, saying what they have to say about this. I knew the minute that this story hit that it would create a, a huge debate in the Linux community over security. And in a lot of ways, this is a good thing because it's a question that needs to be asked. If you take a computer and you hook it up to the Internet and you turn it on and get online, you're putting yourself at risk. It doesn't matter what operating system you're running. It doesn't make any difference. There are people out there who... Uh, are either for money or just for the fun of it who uh, want to try and break into people's computer systems. By far the safest choice today is Linux. It is absolutely the safest thing to do uh, use. Um, if you were a hacker you would go after low-hanging fruit and they're going to try and get into these uh, Windows systems that are running out there. There are people out there who are still running Windows XP although it has not gotten and a security update since 2014. So running Linux certainly puts you in a category of being uh, more secure than somebody who's running an old version of Windows XP. However, it doesn't mean that you're totally safe. And if somebody wants to hack you, they want to get after your stuff, it doesn't matter what you do, what firewalls you put up, whatever, they're going to get to you. If they single you out and they say I'm gonna find out what this person's doing whether you're running Linux or whatever they're gonna get after you it's like uh, all of the security measures that are built into Linux or whatever you do to uh, enhance your security it's just like putting an extra lock on the front door it's a deterrent it slows people down it discourages them but if somebody really wants to get in your house like the police with a battering ram They'll take the whole door out. It doesn't matter what uh, locks you have on it. They'll just knock the whole thing down, or they'll come in through a window. Okay, so if you understand that logic, you have to keep that in mind when you're reading this stuff. And one quick comment about a lot of what you read here. The Linux community has a lot of folks who comment on happenings and offer their opinions about uh, what distributions are doing and that sort of thing and that's good unfortunately many of these people have absolutely positively no journalism experience whatsoever they have no idea how to uh, vet what they write in other words they're not confirming they're not looking at other sources of course, if you're just giving an opinion, it's very difficult to do that. I mean, you can certainly cite uh, 
sources that back you up. But when you're dealing with a situation like what we've just been through with Linux Mint, there's a lot of people who are writing things that are not necessarily based in fact. They are spreading alarm and they are doing that to further their own agenda, to take a stand on the issue just to appear to have some sort of inside knowledge, which they do not have. Uh, this happens a lot within the Linux community. So beware what you read and check your sources. If you are reading some obscure Reddit post about blah, 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 and this person is going on, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Because you have to ask yourself, who is this person and how do they know this information and does it jibe with what everybody else is saying? As far as where I formed my opinion on Linux Mint, the first person, the first place is the Linux Mint team themselves. They've been very transparent about what has happened and offered all of that information right up front. So you can go check this for yourself. And the other people that I have listened to on this topic are people that are security experts that work in a capacity where they are consulting uh, large corporations on internet security okay so it's not Bob down the street who's uh, a self-proclaimed Linux guru because he went and downloaded Ubuntu last week and played with it before he posted a video that I'm listening to uh, so I'm passing that opinion on based on that the thing that you have to keep in mind as well is that as I said a lot of these people who are posting have no journalistic experience whatsoever none they're just putting something up there and they're trying to get clicks and while I don't like to beat my own chest or blow my own horn <laughs> I just want you guys to know that before I started posting YouTube videos I spent 20 years in radio and television and I was a manager of many radio stations and a couple of TV stations that were all uh, in clusters. The company that I worked for owned a bunch, okay? Best way to put that. And so for a while there, I was the, the final arbiter on what got on the air and what was news. And I always tried to tell my reporters, don't report on something just to report on it because everybody else is doing it. If you need to find a local angle and you need to be able to uh, bring something to the story, don't just repeat what other people say. Do your own research. That's number one. And number two, before you actually put it out there in the public, you need to make sure that what you're saying is correct. In other words, you need to do your own research. Unfortunately, a lot of the people who post about Linux or offer their opinion don't do that research first or they only hear the story one place and then they just repeat it they just echo what somebody else says if I'm going to comment on an issue like this then I'm gonna try and do my own research I'm gonna see what the deal is at least two or three other places and I have some trusted sources that I go to uh, when it's something like this that's a fact-based story. If it's my opinion on something, I'm going to tell you my opinion. I'll give you a reason why I formed that opinion. And if I'm wrong about something, I'm going to tell you I was wrong. And it doesn't... I, a lot of times I have found out that I was wrong about something and then the video will just disappear or I will make a correction later. Um, I'm doing this as a community outreach to try and bring more people to Linux. I'm not doing this to uh, make myself an authority on Linux. However, I do have the unique experience of having worked with a couple of hundred people now over the last couple of years in installing Linux on their equipment and or their hardware, a lot of different kinds of hardware, and making sure that they have success with the operating system. And so therefore, I think that gives me a unique perspective on what works and what doesn't, especially for new users. You can use any Linux distribution you like. 
you can set up your system any way you want to. It's all going to depend how successful you are on the level of your understanding of what you're doing. And if you are one of those people who can compile all of your own packages from source code and build a Linux system completely from scratch, I think that's wonderful. But people who are that good at doing that sort of thing sometimes lose perspective on what it's like for the new user. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stay out here on the skirts of all of the nerdism that goes on and to bring people into the community uh, who are not necessarily the most computer savvy on the planet. So that's a lot of where what I do comes from. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. Love to hear your comments and suggestions. Please keep them civil <laughs> and respectful. Most people have lately. Thank you very much. Um, that's another thing I want to say very quickly before I wrap this up. You know, some people have said, well, it's, you know, it's a big turnoff when you tell people they have to be civil and respectful and tell people that they have to be careful what they write. I don't think so. I don't think that's a turnoff at all. Anybody who would appreciate being a part of a community where people are not going to be allowed to uh, verbally abuse others or use it as a platform to force their own agenda uh, probably would be very happy about that. It has nothing to do with my personal feelings. As I mentioned earlier, I worked in radio and television for 20 years. And if you work in a, a radio station or a television station, not a day goes by that the phone doesn't ring and somebody tells you how badly you suck. Okay, I don't care. It's not personal. I'm just trying to preserve uh, some sort of civility in the community um, so that people who do come to the videos here or read uh, any kind of reference to it, uh, Freedom Penguin or wherever else, uh, are not going to have to worry about jumping into a big flame war going on. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, check out freedompenguin.com. Lots of great articles coming up there. Lots of new videos posted uh, from contributors from all over, not just me. Check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you would, give it a like when you come by there. Thank you for watching. We'll talk again soon.